Subcooling, that is an important part of refrigeration. So we're going to do a quick review of subcooling and then we'll take a look at why it's important for uh, refrigeration and air conditioning. So subcooling, that is the condensing temperature less the outlet temperature. So here's an example. 95 degree ambient temperature, if we have 125 degree condensing temperature, remember that is the temperature that we read from our pressure on our gauges, either by looking at the gauge itself and converting the pressure to temperature or looking at a PT chart. And then you take the uh, liquid line temperature at very close to the condenser outlet and you subtract that from the condensing temperature and that gives you subcooling. So in this example we have 10 degrees of subcooling. Now you, you really need to have subcooling because it prevents flash gas and that that's when the uh, refrigerant starts to flash from liquid to vapor within the uh, liquid line before it hits the metering device and you start to lose cooling and freezing capabilities from your refrigerant. And I don't think it's a big deal that you have system efficiency. One degree of subcooling equals a half a percent of increased system efficiency. Where this really um, saves money is in supermarket refrigeration where they have subcoolers and such. So if they can gain uh, one or two percent system efficiency on the large, large systems, that, that could be a considerable savings. Okay, so how do you measure subcooling? Well, you hook your refrigeration gauges up to the liquid line service port and this is here's a digital gauge right here so it's 175 PSIG with R04, R404 refrigerant is 80 degrees of refrigerant temperature you measure the liquid line out of the condensing unit that temperature happens to be 74 degrees here so in this case we have an six degrees of subcooling. That is how you measure your subcooling on a uh, refrigeration system exactly the same as you measure it in a um, air conditioning system. Now once it's condensed and once the refrigerant is condensed we don't want it to flash off to vapor before it hits the metering de device and before it should. So liquid refrigerant will flash off to vapor because of pressure drop or of um, temperature increase and in added heat. So for example if you had a kink in the refrigerant line that would cause a pressure drop and could cause the liquid to flash off into vapor before it hits that metering device. So let's take a look at why you need subcooling. So here's Karen's cafeteria she has got her walk-in cooler up here on the third floor of the office building and the condensing unit is outside. So here's what we have at the condensing unit. We have 278 PSIG of head pressure. That equates to a saturation temperature of 125 degrees. Liquid line is 125 degrees. So if we do our math, we, ha we take our saturation temperature we subtract the liquid line temperature and we find we have no subcooling. So there is no subcooling at this point. So this refrigerant line runs up the side of the building. And when it gets to the top of the riser here, and let's assume it's a 30 foot rise, there's a 15 PSIG pressure drop. If you take that and uh, subtract that from the pressure, the discharge pressure of 278 down here, you end up with 263 PSIG. And at 263 PSIG, there's 121, uh, the saturation point is 121 degrees. So to get to this point without it flashing to vapor, you need four degrees of subcooling as it exits the condensing unit. So with this much of a pressure drop you have at least four degrees of subcooling. If you don't then it's going to be flashing off to gas long before it hits the metering device. So then it goes through a ceiling space and it's 135 degrees in the ceiling. 
and the liquid line picks up another five degrees of heat heat in the ceiling you need five degrees more of subcooling to pre prevent flashing before the metering device which means you need a minimum of nine degrees of subcooling in this circuit so subcooling is really important a lot of times in a commercial refrigeration you do have some longer runs to get to the other side of a restaurant or to an ice machine that is up a couple floors up and the condensers down below and and there's there can be and are uh, many joints 90s twists and turns and those all equate to pressure drops so that's why subcooling is important both in air conditioning and refrigeration all right so that's it quick review of subcooling and I'll see you on the next video